Hello, I'm Anne Montgomery, Editor-in-Chief of Bioprocess International Magazine. I'm here at Biotech Week in Boston speaking with several thought leaders about advancements in bioprocessing and cell therapy development. I hope you enjoy their insights and their visions for the future. I'm Dave D'Augusto and I'm the Executive Director of Stem Cells and Cellular Therapeutic Operations at Stanford University and Stanford Hospital and Clinic. Uh, my background is in cellular immunology and stem cell biology and I've spent the last 25 years of my life developing cells as therapeutic agents and specifically as uh, the next generation of treatments for neoplastic, monogenic and uh, diseases in regenerative medicine. Stanford is actually a engine for innovation and we are centered in the Silicon Valley and with the large number of investigators at Stanford, we have a vast pipeline of cell and gene therapy applications or products that are wishing to move their way to the market. Um, I came to Stanford to develop the infrastructure to translate those cell and gene therapy products to the clinic initially, but ultimately to develop those products as uh, the standard of care treatment for a variety of diseases, including cancer, um, immune disorders, uh, monogenic diseases, and regenerative medicine. Uh, we've built infrastructure in terms of manufacturing facilities, but also clinical facilities, and we're currently developing the staff um, and the uh, paradigm by which we select products to move towards the clinic and the way we partner and reinvest uh, any revenues from partnerships into the discovery engine so that we can keep the cycle going. Um, we currently are working in a number of areas including immune therapies, cardiovascular therapies, um, neural system therapies, and regenerative medicine uh, to develop uh, these products to treat these diseases and that requires dedicated infrastructure, funding, and people with the expertise that uh, can take these things forward into the clinic and manage the clinical trials. One of the biggest issues we have is how to prioritize the vast number of essentially asks that we have um, to move these forward. So we've developed uh, algorithms to review and score cell therapy candidates uh, to prioritize them for entry into the queue with the idea that we'd like to maximize the value of our products and come up with a value proposition that is attractive to our commercial partners down the road. We intend to take these products forward through phase two clinical trials and proof of concept and then partner with the biopharmaceutical industry to develop them further as commercial products. Uh, among the uh, ac uh, products we're currently do, uh, developing include uh, modification of hematopoietic stem cells to correct a genetic disease, um, development of regulatory immune cells or T regulatory cells to suppress graft versus host disease and other uh, immune based disorders such as lupus or um, type 1 diabetes. Um, there's a number of indications in that area. And um, we're also working on creating skin grafts for kids with epidermolysis bullosa, which is a skin disease in which uh, the patient's skin falls off because they don't contain collagen 7. And uh, it's a devastating disease and uh, we're really making a lot of progress in that area, but we really need to reduce it from a uh, clinical experiment to uh, standard of care so we can treat more patients and that has additional applications down the road in creating skin grafts for other indications such as uh, burns or other types of skin wounds. Uh, thinking through the product line, um, we are also developing uh, gene therapy for treating hemophilia and um, sickle cell anemia other diseases that require correction of a monogenic defector, that is one gene that is defective in the patient. Um, these include both ex vivo manipulations or manipulations of the cells in the lab, and also in vivo delivery of viruses that contain corrected genes so that we don't have to take the patient cells out and do a transplant, but we could directly inject a virus carrying a gene that would correct the disease. Stanford Hospital, the Lucille Packard Children's Hospital, and the Stanford School of Medicine together are supporting the development of these products through the development of the infrastructure, infrastructure um, covering the cost of uh, translating these uh, uh, products to the clinic and then providing the space in the clinics to conduct the clinical trials um, where these products will initially get tested 
and demonstrate their safety and proof of concept or efficacy um, so that they can be moved then to commercial entities to commercialize and bring them towards the standard of care as we know it. The difference between traditional therapeutics, whether it be chemotherapy, radiation therapy, um, small molecules is you administer a drug or you administer a treatment. As soon as that drug leaves the body or the x-ray beam is turned off, the treatment ends. What we're proposing with cellular therapeutics is a long-lasting therapy in which we are curative because we're engineering the immune system to provide a corrective activity that your immune system typically would have, but in some cases fails and allows disease to progress. So the difference is a single treatment might lead to a lifelong cure or at least a long-term treatment that would only have to be readministered over long intervals in the terms of years. And uh, for example, I previously worked on um, gene therapy for HIV in which we would correct the hematopoietic or blood stem cell, which gives rise to the entire immune system with genes that would prevent viral infection. So transplanting cells into patients that have uh, HIV would then uh, provide them with a source of HIV resistant T cells so they would never become immunodeficient and thus they would never succumb from infectious disease which is usually what will uh, be terminal for an HIV patient. So the idea is that we can provide long-term treatments and take for example compliance out of the picture. One of the big issues with HIV even though there are very good drugs is many patients can't afford the drugs or stop taking the drugs or forget to take the drugs and it doesn't take very long when you're not taking your drugs to relapse. So we'd like to take compliance out of the picture. We'd like to have long-lasting therapies that don't end and that are very specific and very precise so that you don't use a generic approach, you use a customized approach for your disease and that is the essential basis of precision medicine as we know it.